All uh, right, hello and welcome to Camel Finance. I'm your boy Camel and welcome to Monday. So having just hit a new subscriber milestone, first of all, hello, thank you and welcome to all the new subscribers and hello, thank you and welcome back to all the existing subscribers. This is the channel OG list. All of these people here have channel OG status as they were the first 1000 subscribers to this channel. And before that, we also have to give a shout out and pay homage to the triple OGs who were here before the first 500. So thank you to everyone for your support. Thank you to all the new subscribers and of course the OGs and the triple OGs. And I hope I can continue to build a nice community here and provide value to you. Things are heating up and I love what I'm seeing. So I hope you're gonna enjoy this episode today. That member stock is probably getting added. So I've written a message to the members anyway. Let's get into this. Look, Taylor Swift concert tickets priced in Bitcoin over the course of a decade. See, it seems kind of silly, but it just goes to show, I've shown this many times with things like eggs, sugar, various commodities, right? Over time, if you DCA into Bitcoin, things priced in Bitcoin essentially become free. And it's true of Taylor Swift tickets as well, okay? Here you can see, back in 2013, $100 was one Bitcoin, and for a ticket tour in 2023, you'd be looking at apparently $1,619. And uh, that equates to just 0.06 Bitcoin. So as you can see, things continue to get basically free when priced in Bitcoin, so long as you DCA and hold over time. The true Bitcoin story is much easier to understand when you look somewhere experiencing hyperinflation, such as Argentina, and you can see that right here, okay? This is coming to a currency pair near you in the not too distant future. British HODL here makes a brilliant point. Look, if 50% of the capital that was destroyed in NFTs and altcoins in the last cycle was allocated to Bitcoin instead, then we probably would have seen 150 to 200K per Bitcoin in the last cycle. Now, this is not to mention the fraud that FTX was undergoing. And of course, if they weren't, then we probably would have seen even higher numbers than this in the last cycle. So what happens in this next cycle when all the VCs and fraudsters are focused on AI stocks? Well, there's gonna be a Bitcoin ETF. Adoption has grown, institutional awareness has grown, clarity around taxation is now present, and Bitcoin is mainstream. Wake up, because this is a lot more urgent than you think. This cycle is shaping up to really melt faces, to really be a cycle that people don't think is possible. The human brain is not very good at comprehending exponential curves. And we are quite possibly going to see Bitcoin do Bitcoin things. And those Bitcoin things, people are likely not going to be able to imagine at this current moment in time. If you're not convinced, check this out, right? Because a mere three and a half percent surge on Friday in gold catapulted gold's market cap by a staggering $444 billion, okay? So that's around 85% of Bitcoin's current market cap just in this one green candle that we saw on Friday. So if this doesn't point out just how early we are in Bitcoin, then I don't know what will, okay? A lot of people say, where's the money gonna come from? Where's the money gonna come from? Well, there is 85% of Bitcoin's market cap in a single candle for the gold market. The money can easily come into this system. A Bitcoin hash rate continues to hit new all-time highs, and it's only a matter of time before the price is gonna do the same. So you can see this, look, relentless and ruthless uptrend in hash rate. We are likely going to see a similar thing unfold for the price of Bitcoin. And the whales know this. Look, the whales are accumulating on October the 14th, 16 new wallets joined the crowd of Bitcoin whales holding between 100 and 1,000 Bitcoin. This is the greatest daily increase since February of 2022. Over the weekend, we were also seeing Coinbase continue to buy spot Bitcoin. And the amount of buy volume coming from the US after this ETA, excuse me, ETF news is huge. Only a matter of time before the markets start to push up, liquidating shorts and triggering a bullish pivot. And of course, here we are on Monday morning, 10 a.m. UK time, and we're already starting to see that in the price. We're gonna to get to the charts in a minute. The charts look fantastic. The big question for me is that will Bitcoin history repeat in 2024? Pause your screen and take a good look at this, okay? Pause your screen and take a good look at this. And as I've been making the case, if you've been here before, you'll know this for sure. When I add Bitcoin, I also add the Bitcoin proxies and I add the miners. And what's good for miners is good for Bitcoin, right? The two most popular Bitcoin mining stocks, Marathon and Riot, couldn't look any better. They're both sitting on fresh retests of important breakouts. When we take a look at the past breakouts, it becomes clear they mark the beginning of great Bitcoin price action. Let's not forget about the most textbook head and shoulders forming on Marathon right at the top of the breakout. The last Marathon retest we saw was at the Bitcoin cycle bottom in 2022. So probably nothing, right? So you can see right here, Marathon, okay, inverse head and shoulders and a breakout and looking for a retest and resumption. Same deal here, right? We've got this big bottom formation, 
for Raya, breakout, retest, secondary retest, looking for that resumption higher, right as these cycle bottoms have both flashed for Bitcoin. So again, looking for higher prices across the board. If this is indeed what's coming, higher Bitcoin prices, then these Bitcoin proxies should fly over the coming weeks and months. The Fed speakers are going to be out in full force this week. We've got 17 Fed speakers this week because they have nothing better to do. So I don't know what's going on here, but expect some chop, expect some volatility and ultimately expect nothing to really change. Making the case all of last week that the CPI print everyone thinks was hot and the higher for longer rhetoric that was bound to be drilled home and, and all of this stuff. I was making the case that that is just a trap set for retail and true inflation down at 2.2 now. Okay, and even the UK inflation, this is still horrific, but at least it's not double figures anymore, right? So inflation is apparently coming down. Remember, this is significantly ahead of the CPI readouts, but I like to see this. I've been using this as a proxy for the entire last couple of years. And a lot of people often say to me, yeah, well, isn't it CP lie? Isn't it all fake? Yeah, it is, but it's the trend in that data. Okay, it doesn't matter that it's fake. What matters is the direction it's, it's moving. Is it trending up? Is it trending down? Is it trending sideways? Has it just bucked trend and changed direction? These are the things that are useful to know. And as it stands, the trend is still continuing down. So we've been using it and it's worked well for us up until this point. I don't see any reason to stop using it until it starts to harm us. And with all that said, let's get into some charts because Monday is kicking off to be a fantastic start to the week. The dollar thinking about thinking about confirming this as a retest before resumption lower, isn't it? The euro dollar, I haven't looked at this chart yet, but perhaps thinking about thinking about breaking out for a second attempt. So all the while this lows in, I think we can still say this is going to be pretty bullish. So maybe we're going to see something like this out of the euro dollar. And of course, if we do, that should pressure the dollar index to the downside, still targeting 95. And that has been the target since all the way back here. Things start to get really interesting when we get to the Bitcoin chart, because we have indeed, in my opinion, left behind a day 58, a day 57 cycle low, now confirmed by a downward sloping purple resistance line breakout. So I am long, I've got my stop in as you can see, and we'll see what the market can give. We're still pushing this initial position and there's nothing more I can say about that apart from we waited patiently for the cycle low. The cycle low seems to be in, it seems to have confirmed by a trend line break and now it wants to move higher. So I've traded enough of these cycles to know that sometimes they fail, but the best thing to do for me personally is to put my faith in the cycle to trust what's ahead and what I believe is ahead is another 60 day cycle to the upside. So that's what it is. And here we go. We're long, we're strong. And let's see what the market can give. As we get into the open for the New York stock market, I am thinking about thinking about going long here. I'm going to want my stop for Coinbase below these lows. So I'm in no rush to necessarily add all of these positions right at the opening bell. I'll allow some time to elapse and see what the market looks like. I certainly don't want to see any massive red candles like this. But I'm going to start to add these Bitcoin proxies, as I said I would, at the 60-day cycle low. So micro strategy as well. We're probably going to be adding a long if we can break out of here on a daily closing basis. Riot, I'll be thinking about thinking about adding a long, putting a stop below there. And Marathon, again, we'll be thinking about getting long if we can get a daily closing candle above this downward sloping red resistance line. The stop will go somewhere down here. If you've been on this channel before, this should not be a surprise to you. I've been talking about this over and over and over again. So here's oil, still pushing this oil short. The big thing for me is, is this breakdown, retest, looking for resumption. If it is, then happy days will keep pushing the short. But if we start to recover this, then of course, we run the risk of a break even stop out and we'll be looking for a re entry, assuming it can break down again. But for now, if it continues to reject off of here, then we'll keep pushing the short and there's nothing wrong with the trade. Gold is very interesting to me at the moment, right? Very, very interesting. Is this breakout or retest looking for that resumption? Because if so, then this could certainly be a long, right? We could certainly entertain getting a long somewhere in here with a stop somewhere in this neighborhood and targeting at least the top of the range, if not beyond. The last time I covered gold in the last video, I said that my preferred method for this, if we didn't get a retest, would possibly be to play the minor positions and they would possibly look something like this. So here's the seniors, here's the junior miners. So is that gonna happen today? Or is this a big sort of trap candle that is about to resolve to the downside? Is, have we got more downside for gold? Now, if I ask the question, why gold now? Okay, why gold now? The, the, the very quick answer would be, well, the dollar is probably about to break down. That's one thing in gold's favor. There's the geopolitical concern and risk, right? The tensions from the whole, I'm not even going to say it, but you know what I'm talking about. That also typically would favor gold as a sort of risk off asset. There's also, of course, the end of the rate hiking cycle in sight. So maybe we could see that as well be bullish for gold. But remember, 
the facts are the facts and the charts are the charts. The charts are the truth and charts do not lie. If this continues to close a daily candle below this downward sloping blue resistance line, then this is a failed breakout and I don't want to be anywhere near precious metals because probably we got a bit more of this to come before we can actually go. Certainly not a narrative there for gold to break out. This could certainly just be a hard retest that then resolves to the upside, of course. And if that's the case, then we can look for longs. But paying close attention here because if this is to reverse half of this move and then do something like this, then again, I don't want to be anywhere near precious metal trades at for the foreseeable future, at least. And last but not least, of course, the stock market not yet open, so no real change. Just a quick reminder, we are looking for this pullback to resolve to the upside and to break out. On a breakout here, we'll be looking to get long across the board for the stock indexes. And if I hop into the VIX, you know, I had this arrow right here marked for when I think we would see the top in the VIX, not from a price level, but from a timing perspective. So perhaps if I move this up higher, are we going to see... Uh, it's something like this, right? Are we going to see something like this? I don't know. Top and then go down. That would make perfect sense to me. So keeping a close eye on this. Again, you can probably tell I'm kind of excited. I'm excited by what I see because things are looking great for Bitcoin, right? We were waiting for this um, cycle low to show up. The cycle lows here is confirmed by a breakout and this should lead to further upside. Okay, we should see further upside out of this. If we are going to see further upside, we should see things like the Bitcoin proxies, the crypto related equities do really well. But again, there's a difference between having like an optimistic approach, being enthusiastic about what you're seeing in the charts versus being in a rush to just go full ham on absolutely everything. You know, there's no reason that I need to add 15 new longs today. OK, there's no reason that I, there's no reason for me to be over leveraging, oversizing, taking on unnecessary risk. OK, so I'm still very much in that patient mindset. I'm still not pulling the trigger and just buying absolutely everything at this point, this could still reverse and roll over. Okay, that is still a very real risk, but I don't think that's what's coming. So like I said, I am happy. I am enthusiastic. I am looking forward to seeing what the market will give, but I am by no means rushing in here, FOMOing in here and just going to be buying absolutely everything blind at the opening bell today. So still playing patient, still being a professional about this, but I am feeling very good about what is possibly to come over the next few months. So with that in mind, I hope you're doing well in life. Welcome to Monday and welcome to the week. And until next time, take it from me. All the best. Cheers. Bye.